<laughs> What's up? This is a Russian puppy coming back with y'all. This time we're reading a little bit of story. A good story book today. It's called The Bomb by Steve Sirkin. Alright, we're going to give you the summary right up quick. In December of 1938, a chemist in a German laboratory made a shocking discovery. When placed next to a radioactive... Hey, go out of there, boy! It's a story time! Oh, right, he said, shocking discovery. When placed next to a radioactive material, a urine atom split in two. Come on down now, boy! It's the story time! Jeez! He's jumping around like a wild animal in that. Some kind of ape or something. Alright. That simple discovery dealing with the tiniest of particles launched a cutthroat race that would span three continents. The players were the greatest scientists, the most expert spies, hardened military commandos, and some of the most ruthless dictators who ever lived. The prize, military denominates over the entire world. This is the story of the plotting, the risk, taking, the deceit, and genuineness that created the world's most formidable weapon. This is the story of the atomic bomb. Well, I guess there's no more loud banging going on, so I can finish this part up right here. It's a pretty interesting book, by the way. Alright, the prologue says May 22, 1950. Hey! It's my grandma was born. He had a few more minutes to destroy the 17 years of evidence. Still in pajamas, Harry Gold raced around his cluttered bedroom, pulling out desk drawers, tossing boxes out of the closet, and yanking books from the shelves. He was horrified. Everywhere he looked were incriminating papers, a plane ticket, stub, a secret report, a letter from the fellow spy. Gold ripped the papers to shreds carried two fistfuls to the bathroom, shoved them into the toilet, and flushed. Wow. Then he ran back to his bedroom, grabbed the rest of the pile, and stumbled on slippers down the stairs to the cellar, <laughs> where he pushed the stuff to the bottom of an hour for a flowing garbage can. The doorbell rang. Ding! Gold walked to the door. He took a few deep breaths, trying to slow his heartbeat. <sighs> then opened the door and saw the man he expected. Federal Bureau of Investigation Agents. Scott Miller and Richard Brennan. They had been huh, questioning Gold for days, showing him pictures of known spies, demanding information about his connection to these people. Gold had admitted nothing, insisting he was what he appeared to be, a simple, hard-working chemist who lived with his father and brother, and he had never been far from his Philadelphia home. Unconvinced, the FBI agents had come to search his house. Gold led the way to his room. Agent Miller sat down at Gold's desk and started opening drawers, shuffling through paper files. Bernan went to work on the sagging bookshelves, packed tight with math and science volumes and stacks of paper novels. Bernan flipped through a paperback Stopping to inspect something stamped on the inside cover. The name of the department store in Rochester, New York. What's this? He asked Gold, holding up the open book. Oh, I don't know, Gold said. Must have picked it up on a used book counter somewhere. Lord knows where. Then, from a desk drawer, Miller pulled a train schedule 
for the Washington, Philadelphia, New York, Boston passenger line. Another clue that gold wasn't the homebody he described. What's this, Harry? Miller asked. Goodness knows, Gold said, shrugging. I probably picked it up when I went to New York. This is bad, he said to himself. Bad, but not terrible. Then came the body blow. Gold watched Bernan slot a thick, tattered copy of Principles of Chemical Engineering from the shelf. Nausea swelled Gold's throat as he saw a light brown folded street map drop to the floor to Gold. The map seemed to scream its title in the silent room. New Mexico land of enchantment. Oh God, he thought. So you were west of the Mississippi, said Bernan, bending down. To lift the map. He opened it and saw at that spot in Santa Fe where the Calisto Street Bridge crosses the Santa Fe River and an X marked in ink. How about this, Harry? demanded Bernan. Miller spun from the desk, stood and watched Gold. Gold needed to speak quickly, needed to offer an explanation, ha ha ha. But he froze. Give me a minute to, give me a minute. He managed, falling heavenly into his desk chair. Bernan offered him a cigarette, which he took. Bernan lit it and gold drew deeply. A torrent of thoughts poured through my mind. Gold later said of this moment, the map could easily be explained. He'd just, he'd just say he loved western stories, which was true, and that out of the curiosity he had sent on to a Santa Fe museum for the map. Surely they didn't keep records of such requests, no one could prove he was lying. But then he thought about what would happen if he continued claiming innocence. My family, my people, with her room, whom I worked, and my friends, whom I knew, my lifetime friends, they, they would all rally around me, and how horrible would be their disappointment, and the letdown, but finally, it was shown who I really was. Ah. <clears throat> Harry Gold had been living a double life for 17 years. Overwhelmed by exhaustion, he turned to the FBI agents. They were still waiting for an answer. Yes, I am the man, Gold said. He slumped a little lower in his chair. There is a great deal more to the story. It goes way back. He said, I would like to tell a lot. Mm -hmm. huh. And that was basically the all opening session there. When it all starts. So hope you enjoy, fellas. We're going to start on page 7 next time. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to leave a little like for me. Maybe a comment to their comrades. And subscribe if not yet already. <laughs> Russian puppy is out of here. We'll be coming back with some more reading. Until next time. Later, homies.